Did you learn things that you didn't think you could tell? Absolutely. I've I've lots and lots of things. I can't I don't feel comfortable talking about. There there are a bunch well, of things give, without asking you to do what you've decided not to do. <laughs> what kind of thing are you talking about? People who were murdered, people right. what? Right. People who were murdered, um, types of operations, um, the way that lethal authorities issued out of the uh, White House, um, how these things get executed out in the field, um, uh, coup d'etat, information on the interest, the real special interest behind coup d'etat uh, all over the globe. Um, the idea of coup d'etat is an amazing idea, and it goes on. I mean, I, I sat with a bunch of oil men, very powerful oil men. At a, coup d'etat meaning overthrow a government. Overthrow a government. And I sat on Fifth Avenue, this 15,000 square foot apartment, just, just around the corner on Fifth Avenue, one of these brownstones, guy owns the whole building, an oil man. And he and his friends played a little game at this table um, where they, they made a guess. They said, next country to be overthrown for its energy assets. And they all started throwing out Sao Tome, Equatorial Guinea. And the one guy who was having the party, the richest one of them all, he just, he cleared the table and he said, you're all wrong, I can tell you which one it is, it's Nigeria, it's already happening, it costs $50 million. And then, I'm not kidding, not very long after that, there was Chavez and that huge dust up and all that stuff going on, and I, you know, with the people in the streets, he had said at this dinner party, I said, what, first question, what's the money for? Well, I buy media. I buy media, I buy stories and I buy op-ed pieces and I buy front page stories and then I buy mobs. I pay off mobs to show up in the street on demand. That's what I do. It's verbatim. I sat there. Bayer was there with me. I wrote it all down in my notebook. I'm like, are you kidding me? And I just thought maybe these guys are showing off. Maybe they're just being big guys. And then Venezuela goes haywire. <laughs> I don't know if it's a direct connection, but it was deeply unsettling. Christopher Plummer plays sort of one of these Mandarin lawyers that we could probably name ten names of right now that uh, are always in Washington. They have their firms divided down the middle with Republicans on one side, Democrats on the other. They cross all the administrations. And what's your moral judgment about lawyers like that in this movie and otherwise? I, I, don't, I try not to have a moral judgment on them. Um, I, I think they're a fact of life and they exercise a tremendous amount of power. And I heard stories that would curl your hair Truly, you'd have curly hair, and yeah. uh, and it's it's just interesting, you know, that these men can represent inside one law firm, um, they can represent uh, Gulf like Saudi Arabia and an oil company, and you know, a military contractor, and uh, be the private lawyer of a senator, you know, and it's one nexus point, and it's a, it's just an interesting feature to Washington. Um, I heard I heard a lot of stories about a man actually, who he's a, he's a well-known lawyer, but he. Um, this is something that was said about him that's an amazing thing. He's a partner at one of the big firms. And it was said that if you wanted information about the Middle East, if you were, say, the Vice President of the United States, and you wanted information about the Middle East, you were better off going to this lawyer, one lawyer, than the entire CIA. Because he could make one phone call to because some his client His information was better. His information was better. Now why was that? One lawyer. It was said by a bunch of different people to me that he was better connected in the Middle East and the entire Central Intelligence Agency. And what kinds of clients did he have? Middle Eastern countries or Every, oil companies yeah, or... Everybody. You know, everybody. Princes and everybody else. Yes, all the above. And a and, and hundred more. Mm. But Bob, you spend time with Bob and he talks, you know, little things sort of dribble out of his mouth periodically about small planes and, and just acts of terror and how easy it is to do this, that or the other thing. And they're quite specific and it's, it's um, very unsettling. I'll never fly in a small plane again, by the way. Just no, no not? small planes for me. Why not? It's too easy to bring them down and make it look like an accident. It just, I just heard too many examples of it. it Bayer made me completely paranoid.